Today we're going to talk about the five students to watch out for. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today I'm going over the five students that you do need to keep on your radar just because of issues that might arise over class time. So I compiled this list. I saw, I had somebody comment down of, they have this kind of student, this is a situation. What, what's your take on it? And it started triggering a, a memory of like, over the course of the years I've been teaching, there's five students really to be on the lookout for of like, these are ones who are gonna give you issues in class in general, personally, professionally, however you guys wanna see it, but these are five that I've found to rock the boat too much. All right, so first off, number one, the attention seeker who's going it for the class. Now, these ones are a dime a dozen. These students are the ones who are rambunctious, they wanna be kind of out and about, and they want their peers to see them trying to push your buttons. Best, best suggestion for them is to figure out why. And pulling the kid to the side and said, look, this is this is how this is gonna go. You are the student, I'm the teacher. This is the stuff that we're working on. I need you to work with me. And there's two issues at play here. Sometimes the student just wants to be seen by their peers as somebody, and it's a power struggle most of the time, that you see them in that in that way. And I usually make those students my um, my TAs. And this, this kind of works across the board for a number of things. Make those students my TA. That as soon as they come into class, before they come into class, I've seen them in the hallway, touch base with them. Hey, how's it going? How's your day? What's new? I see them, I touch base with them, I talk to them. And there's that relationship of like, oh, I I want to help this person out. They're trying to give me common courtesy. They're giving me decency, and I want to I want to help make their life better too. And that that works well. It creates a good community involvement. Other times, it's just because they just want to be a jerk, and that's it. They just want to do that because it's a power struggle. One of those things where you could you could keep giving the detention, you can keep calling the kid out, and put him out in the hallway, send him to an administrator. It's never going to solve the problem. It's kind of a kill him with kindness mentality. That doesn't mean that you need to be a pushover, but it's like cut and dry. This is how this is going to be. That you're not going to get flustered by them acting out, by them being a disruption. Some of the stuff that I've done in the past where uh, I've had kids who are rambunctious and like that, and I've done the meme wall, and it's kind of a sly version of like, I can out rank you and just cool factor and doing stuff because I would throw stuff up on the board of like so instead of them wanting to be the center of attention they the kids would rather watch the meme wall or do something else because that's more engaging than this one kid so it's restructuring the power structure for them. Another thing with that that I've actually done uh, more than a, is students who will graffiti the tables and they graffiti the tables, they write something on there and just because it's it's a power move, they think that they can do that on the table. I see it and then after class, I, I, I wait till the end of the day because of what I, what I do, I tag the room or I tag that table and do something else. I pull out my stencils, I pull out my spray paint and I, I've got a video, it's like teacher tags in art room. I'll link it up here. So I had a, a student who wanted to just sit there and draw all over the table with with a sharpie and i was like okay that's fine um i pulled out my paints and did a design a little thing it was like a solar um space graffiti painting just real quick took about five minutes to do uh but wait until the kids are out not coming in the room for a long time so that, that it's aerosol chemicals so safety matter there but the next day the kids come back in and no one has anything to say because miss g took you to task and that and that kid didn't talk for most of the rest of the term uh, because they they got sh they got showed up in front of their peers. All the all the kids are like, oh, he did this. I can sit there and waste time and and say something to the kid and like, oh, you guys shouldn't deface property or something else. And does that work? No. Um, does it work just to give the kid attention? Not really. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. It's again, it's all power moves. It's what can they do to disrupt the to disrupt the class. So when you are doing something that is one upping what they did, it's it's either they're going to try and one up it again. Which honestly, if you're graffitiing putting marker on a table you're gonna do something bigger that admin would have to be called for regardless so basically I'm trying to cut you off at the pass like don't try something because it's just not gonna work out for you and I want to deter you trying to just be an aggressor there's no point in you doing that um, and I, I made a little speech the next day I was like yeah somebody came in here and just threw something on the table and I you know I being the teacher want to teach you guys how it's properly done so we know what we're looking at as a proper piece of graffiti and that was great because I was doing a graffiti unit at some point during the year and I just kind of fast tracked it up and I showed the kids other graffiti pieces I've done and other stuff. It's one of those things where I've taken it to a level of like the kids just like, I'm not going to bother him because it's a waste of my time. And that's good. I cut them off at the pass just that way. So um, be con contemplate why they're doing the actions that they're doing, not are they just trying to get under your skin. 
it's kind of key um which kind of goes to the other side of the fence here which is you have a student who's an attention seeker for you so some of the behaviors that they're doing are they doing it just to 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 get under your skin and do something specifically to you they're not doing it to show it to their friends they want to do it to have some sort of engagement with you that can become really dicey depending on who the student is um you know um male female or um male male female female depending on um the situation that could come into play that there could be some sort of uh, the kid likes you and that's what they're playing into and that's the reason why they want you to you to scold them you to say something to them you to interact with them on a specific level that is one of those things where you might want to call an administrator and say i think this might be the reason and again i'm not talking with the student one-on-one -on, -one on these kind of things i'm talking with somebody above me to give me a, like a, to to make it kind of aware that this might be happening and i want to cut it off at the pass before it does and you're you're being proactive in in the way that you're doing it. and and again document everything i send tons of emails when i'm when i'm dealing with any kinds of situations in general i email all everybody so that there's a written document of what's going on and this, that's just an important factor to know that's across the board anything that you do make sure you got some written documentation down of why things are going on why are things transpiring but know why that the kid wants to have that interaction with you they might have a bad home life and the and the only positive person that they see all day is you and that's the interaction that they want and they strive to get and that's what they need but they don't know how to go about it. So again, making those little things in the hallways, like, hey, how's it going? You have a good weekend this weekend? Good to hear. Keep on moving. I'll, I'll see you later. And and I'm just touching base, like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a helpful person. I'm here to make sure that you have a proper education and that you get that you go out into the world as a, as a proper student. That is my daily. And I keep that motif up. I, I you know, fist bump. I never hug, never I, I don't like touching in general, so the fist bump is all I do. Uh, it's also a germ thing. Uh, it's been great. So, like the last ten years that I've been doing fist bumps, the kids were like, "Oh, that that was smart," because <laughs> there's still some teachers who they want to hug all their students, and I'm like, "Nope, I like being not sick. That's my goal." So, number three is kind of going left a little bit here. The problem parent. Uh, you might have a kid who is a problem in class, or they might just be slightly problematic to where you need to call home or do something, and it's the parent that's really the issue. Um, and you will know this over a year or two at a, at a certain school, you'll know who is those parents. And they want to have some sort of interaction at the school level, and it's just because that's what they wanna do, that's their thing. They want to just fight the school. It's their life. Most of the time, these, these parents that I've run into, it's because of, uh, it's a couple different factions in the way that they work. You have a, a parent who is so like, oh, my child doesn't do anything, mom. My child, my child is the best. My child's no. Um, again, documentation, email. I do it. If it happened that day, I call that day. If it happened on Tuesday, I call on Tuesday. If it happened on Tuesday, and I call on Wednesday. That's for a different matter altogether. I'm calling you about something else because uh, those parents are always wanting to fight just the, the idea of what's going on not on the merits of what happened but just on the um they just want to fight just to fight i know know who those parents are ahead of time talk to admin get them involved they uh, admin is really good about those situations because they deal with that kind of stuff on the daily that's their life pass that one up don't don't make yourself have have a don't hurt your brain because you you don't want to deal with that situation it's just not fun in general but on the other end of the spectrum you have those parents who and i said this in another video i've had parents that are awful to the rest of the school but to me they were like my best friend having those relationships with those parents or having a relationship with a with one parent who will go to bat for you to the school board to anything having them close by when you have that bad parent come in and having that parent take care of your battle for you i have had that where i had i knew i had a conference at uh, like 4.40 with with the, the bad parent and one at 4.30 with the good parent. And I'd make sure that, oh, we just talked a few extra minutes so when we see each other in the hallway and uh, they see me interacting with that one parent, it ain't me who's calling you out because I'm the bad person. No, there's something else going on. And I, and I keep that up there. 90% of education in general is politics and understanding the political spectrum and how this stuff works. Keeping those things in mind, those little tricks, it makes life easier. It really does. It may sound really bad, like, oh, he's just an awful person. Sometimes you gotta do some stuff, but it comes, it, it's for the benefit of, the, of all of us. And that's the key, is I'm trying to make sure that everybody is treated fairly and you see that 
We all have our own little nuances and way that we do things, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to make sure that we're all covered. So pass the buck forward. Don't think that you have to shoulder this by yourself or ask people on Facebook, because not everybody's got a good answer. Sometimes it, you need to take it to admin. Going back to the students now, number four, watch out for the quiet ones. Quiet ones are ones who sit in class that are quiet, that don't really do anything. There's a couple different issues with them. You One, you wanna make sure that all your students are engaged, that you're getting some sort of connection with all your students. Um, reason being that I'd say be wary of them. I had some kids who were dead quiet because they were scared of me. No lie, they, they, they kinda like that twitchy dog when they see somebody that they don't want to be around. The kid just didn't want to be in my class because he feared me. And I'm, I wasn't mean to this kid. I didn't yell at him um, in particular for anything. He just was skittish around me. He just didn't, he was just kind of off. And I you know, kept my distance. Didn't really uh, want to make the kid feel any more uncomfortable. But there was a situation during class one time where the kid wet himself because he couldn't ask to go to the bathroom. I had a long discussion with his mom and, and like, I, mom and I were on the same page of like, we don't know why he's scared or what's going on or sometimes he's just aloof and these things happen. And mom, mom understood everything, but watch out for that because it's just a situation you just don't want to deal with. Last but not least, number five, this one is by far mm, cream of the crop of kids that are just problematic, the line walkers. The ones who you put the line in the sand and they want to walk up and down that line right on the edge the whole time. Um, I have one student I'll never forget. I know he's at least in his 20s by now. Um, we'll call him O. The whole school knew who this kid was because he would walk the line of everything that you could possibly do without crossing the line to getting an expulsion or anything else. Kid got attention four times a week on a good day and he knew he knew enough to what to push and that was his goal it's just to push buttons and that's all he wanted to do and it wasn't just one teacher it was the entire school at a, as a whole and mom was on the same page as all of us like we don't know why he's he's this way this is just how he wants to be don't waste your time just don't like do the detentions do the phone call home keep your records of that you did something that you you kept everything in line but don't get frustrated because sometimes you just have that one kid hopefully it's just one that is that way and there's nothing you can do there's no remediation there's no class that you can sit through seminar or anything that's going to make this kid work better it's not it's and that's that's something you just got to live with that that's how this is and just don't focus your time on it and the one of the best ways that I can I can say that I got out of towards it was like halfway through the semester is I didn't ignore this kid completely, but he definitely went to the back of the line in my head. Doing that, he he just kind of gave up. Like I'm not gonna keep pushing this guy's buttons because I'm not getting the reactions I want out of it. And the kids were done with him at that point too. They were like, it's like end of the year, man. Just why are you here? What's the point? And we kind of all collectively like, oh hey hey, how's it going? Oh that was funny, yeah and. Keep that train on moving and he just kind of like just gave up at at that point of just like i'm not gonna keep showing out and doing what i think is funny because i'm not getting the reaction under you guys and that's it's kind of like it's just starving the candle if it's not going to keep burning there's no point in the, keeping the candle lit so um so the candle just extinguishes itself and that was a great thing to come to realization of and again i did this early on in my years of experience of just like i'm just not gonna bother and see what happens and it is through those trials and errors that you figure out oh that's what works this is what doesn't work and that's all 100 percent on you what works for you might not work for somebody else but you have time if those are the situations that you run into think about how is that going to affect you because if it's going to burn you out then you're not beneficial to the students one of the best bits of advice i ever had from one of my college professors or visiting professor one of the best things that i heard that he said to me was don't teach anything you don't care about and i've kind of taken that as like an entire mantra where i teach the projects i want to teach because i'm interested in them and i do the stuff in my class that i'm interested in and because of the energy that i have and i'm always like i'm like i said i'm a big personality kids feed to that kids love that that's what's great, and that's what works for me. Might not work for you. Do something that is fun for you. Do something that invigorates you. Because if you are excited and engaged, the students by nature just 
fed into that. So as long as you're doing something fun, doing something interesting that you like to do, use that to help benefit yourself, benefit your school, benefit everybody else. I'm doing a few of these uh, classroom management things for a while just because I, I get questions all the time uh, between my new teachers, people online, uh, friends, colleagues, everybody else. I got questions and uh, I've got some, some time around the bin. I know a couple things. Uh, so I figured let's do some of these videos. With that, let's go ahead and wrap up class. Um, stay tuned. I'm, I'm working on doing an entire thing for uh, the... I'm working on some stuff. With that said, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out to so as many teachers, friends, colleagues that we possibly can. Want to educate the masses. Get us all on the same page so we don't have to deal with uh, problem students. Uh, don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. Until then, I'll catch you guys next class. So uh, have a good one. I'll see you guys later. Later, guys.